You're standing on lava. I'm standing on lava. I'm standing below lava. I'm in lava because this is a lava tube. <laughs> it's really cool. We are at Craters of the Moon National Monument in Idaho, where you got to climb a cinder cone. We went through a lava tube, and you actually get to travel on part of the Oregon Trail. So there's a lot to do here. In fact, there's so much to do here that we thought we were going to spend maybe an hour and we were just going to drive the seven mile loop because that's what we thought was here. And turns out we spent four hours and still didn't see everything. Well, this is this whole area is just lava fields and there's so many different type. It's not it's all the same type of lava, but because of the way it flowed and cooled, it all looks very different depending on where you're at. I think it is technically different types of lava depending on its age and style because of how it cooled, but we're not geologists. You can learn about it in the visitor you're, center. You're the junior ranger, I'm not, so but we'll it, go with you. But either way, it's still very unique. And it's just because of the way it cooled, you see different types of formations from stuff that looks like taffy to stuff that looks like popcorn and everything in between. And there's even some that they call it like the dragon rock because it's got like this blue shine on it that's sort of like dragon scales, I suppose. Anyway, there's a lot to see here. Throughout this park, you're going to see lava that has flowed and bubbled and stretched and done all kinds of things. But behind me, are what they call cinder cone fragments. And they think that it is actually from somewhere else within this park and that the lava as it flowed grabbed these large chunks of rock or walls of cones basically. And then they kind of floated along and, and brought them along like icebergs. And then they ended up getting deposited elsewhere. And that's here on this trail. So it's really cool that those came from somewhere else and floated and you know, came down in the lava and didn't just erupt here totally unique and fascinating. <laughs> there is a lot to see here. There's a really good mix of trails. There's no trail that's super long, I think. Some are some are steeper. There's one that's a couple of miles, I think is maybe the longest. Uh, there's a wilderness one that's an overnight backpacking one, but otherwise the ones in the trail or in the park itself really compact or like less than a mile, quarter mile, half mile, and one that's two miles. And a number of the shorter ones are um, accessible. So they're either paved or not a boardwalk. I did something and tweaked my knees. So I found those especially nice on this trip to be able to, to kind of see some of the lava and see the different things in an accessible area. So it was really cool to see that. I did make the hike out to where the lava tubes are at, the lava caves, and that's paved. So it was a little bit, you know, there's some hills to deal with that I had to slow down on. And I didn't scramble through the, the cave quite like you did, but you can get out there if you take your time. I had fun doing the cave scramble, as I guess you'd call it. And the thing about that is you actually have to get a special permit at the visitor center if you want to go out and do that. They're dealing with the white nose syndrome with the bats. So they have a lot of questions for you regarding if you've been in caves before, you know, making sure that you're not wearing the same shoes or clothing or hats that, you know, you might have worn in other caves. So you have to check in with a ranger and get a free permit. Uh, but then once you're out there, yeah, there's a couple different caves that you can go down into. They call them caves, but they're, I guess they are, but they're the inside of what they're called the lava tube, which is where the lava flowed. It hardened on the outside. The lava continued flowing through it. But then when it was all said and done, it just left this wide open space. And now you can go down in there and explore. Yeah, and there are other areas where you can see, um, there's a couple spots as you're headed out to those caves, actually, where you see a lava tube that collapsed. And then across the path from it is a lava tube they said sort of collapsed like a souffle, like it deflated. So it's really cool to see the different ways that the, the lava has changed over time as well. On a couple of the shorter trails that are relatively accessible, you can get up close and personal to that hardened lava. You can look down into what was the volcano where it all came out of. So that was really neat to see that. I was not up for it today, but you actually um, went up something called Inferno Cone. Yeah, that was really cool. It was short, but steep, but worth it. I'm on my way to hike to the top of Inferno Cone here behind me. It's a pretty steep climb. According to the sign, the cinders that it's made up of were actually blown here from another uh, volcano, that this itself was not a cone that erupted, um, but the cinders were all piled here and formed a cone. But it's supposed to provide really good views when you get to the top, so let's go find out. This lava rock is so cool. It is so lightweight. It's like as light as a feather, and it's just crazy when you pick it up and let it fall through your hands. 
just how light it really is. I keep saying that, but it's just, it's just really cool. I made it to the top of Inferno Cone and it is really gorgeous up here. It is a full 360 degree view of Craters of the Moon National Monument. And you can see all of the volcanic structures. You can see the cinder flows. You can see the lava flows. You can see everything from up here. It's a bit of a hike, not gonna lie, bring water and a good hat because um, it's even late in the afternoon and it is still hot up here. Um, but man, the views are gorgeous once you get up here. So well worth that steep, super short hike. I mean, it's like less than a quarter mile up. Then you can run down it, but man, worth it to come up here. Due to Ari's bum knee and our lack of planning and not realizing how much there was to do here, there were a couple hikes that we probably would have done otherwise but didn't get to. One is like there's a big crater trail where you can get up and close to one of the bigger crater volcanoes. Um, we didn't get to do that. And there's something called the Tree Molds Trail, which is a couple mile hike, but at the end of it is supposed to be these really cool formations where the lava basically in encased and then incinerated trees but left behind the mold of the tree so sort of like the opposite of petrified rock or petrified trees i would have loved to have seen those but again poor planning on our part for not realizing that we should have planned way more time at this park so keep that in mind and, and if you're coming through this area plan to spend a whole day here <laughs> well it's going to take you a while to get here first of all it is a very remote national monument in idaho and then yes plan better than we did and plan for some time to do some of those hikes the longer hikes um there is a small campground here actually if you if you can find it, a way to fit it's first come first serve yeah so find a way to fit also <laughs> not just the size of your rig but is there any room yeah. um in the campground but that's something to keep in mind that's a possibility even though it's remote one of the best parts is you're actually driving along part of the oregon trail uh, this is actually a cut off that different immigrants used as they were trying to avoid either hostilities or just trying to find new water sources or new ways through the mountains and so they came through uh, the north what's now the northern section of the craters of the moon national monument because they were trying to avoid the lava rock that was there was no way their oxen were going to cross and then they were trying to avoid the mountains that there was no way their oxen were going to cross so they found in a path right along the base of the mountains and there's a couple places where if you're driving along the road you can kind of see their trails still so that was kind of neat and unique and worth it since you're coming all the way out here in the middle of nowhere <laughs> yeah it's it's worth the drive I, I really liked craters of the moon i guess i didn't know what to expect but it was it was cooler than what i thought it was yeah. And I mean, it's named because everybody thought it looked like the moon's surface. I mean, this became a national monument in 1924, long before we went to the moon. So they didn't really know what the moon looked like. They just guessed at it. But hey, they weren't that far off because Apollo 14 trained here at Craters of the Moon National Monument. So it must be somewhat similar to the moon. <laughs> yeah. Different kind of uh, geology, but similar looking, apparently. So it, it all ties together in the end. <laughs> in the end. Yeah. But again, it, you know, it's a national monument, not a national park, but it's it's really much larger than I thought. And I think that's a key thing where I say you need to spend some plan to spend some more time here maybe than we did. But if you get a chance, get to Idaho, get to Craters of the Moon National Monument. In the meantime, keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there. One quick note about coming to Craters of the Moon. If you're towing a trailer, um, they do let you drop the trailer in the visitor center parking lot. There's enough room here to do that, which is what we did. And then we drove around all day in the park with just the van. So keep that in mind. If you need to do that, you are able to leave a trailer behind and then just go explore with your tow vehicle. I suppose if you had, say, a Class A with a toad, you could park the Class A here and take your toad around. They seem to have enough room and seem to be accommodating for folks to be able to do that.